The tale commences with an introduction to the illustrious Taiko Junior High Basketball Club, a powerhouse team boasting an astonishing list of over a hundred members and an unparalleled streak of three consecutive championship victories. Even within the records of the school's impressive history, a group of five prodigies known as the Generation of Miracles stood out. These individuals were widely renowned for their extraordinary talent, which manifested itself not only in middle school, but also throughout their high school years. However, a peculiar rumor circulated about this exceptional group, a rumor concerning the existence of a phantom sixth man, acknowledged by each of the five prodigies. As a new semester begins at Siren High School, Shinji Kogane, Shun Izuki, and Rinosuke Matobi find themselves immersed in the task of promoting the school's basketball team. They diligently distribute flyers to incoming students. Kogane is approached by a towering and robust individual, whom he promptly brings to Riko Aida and Junpei Hyuga, the coach and captain of the club, respectively. This formidable newcomer named Tega Kagami fiddles out an application form with minimal information, including his name and the fact that he hails from America. When questioned about his motives for joining the team, Kagami simply states that he lacks a compelling reason before walking away. The club members engage in a brief discussion regarding Kagami's intimidating first impression. Kogane characterizes him as terrifying, while the others hold high expectations for his performance. In the midst of their conversation, they discover an additional club request discreetly left by Tetsuya Kuroko, completely unnoticed by anyone. His reason for joining is concisely stated as having played for the Taiko Junior High Basketball Club. Riko deduces that Kuroko must have been a member of the Generation of Miracles, considering his age. Rico speculates that the new first-year students possess tremendous potential. The following day, the coach, Rico Aida, gathers the team and the new applicants in the gymnasium. The new applicants mistake her for the team's manager, but Junpei Hyuga clarifies that she is, in fact, the team's coach. To everyone's surprise, Kenji Takeda, who was initially mistaken for the coach, is revealed to be the club's advisor. Once the misunderstandings are resolved, Rico instructs everyone to remove their shirts. Using her keen eyes, game due to spending time with her father who was a sports trainer, she expertly assesses their physical capabilities. Rico can even accurately guess details about their health from a mere glance. Teiga Kagami's imposing physique astonishes Rico. His numerical measurements exceed what is expected of a first-year high school student. The coach remarks that she has never encountered anyone like him and admits that she cannot fathom the limits of his potential. Junpei Hyuga brings the coach back from her state of awe, reminding Rico that Kagami was the last player to be observed. She double-checks her list, noticing the absence of Tetsuya Kuroko in the gymnasium. Rico assumes that he is absent and proceeds to initiate practice without him. However, much to her surprise and the astonishment of everyone present, Kuroko interrupts the coach and introduces himself. The mysterious player explains that he had been there the entire time, but had gone unnoticed. Shinji Kogane curiously inquires whether Kuroko was a part of the Generation of Miracles, but Hyuba swiftly dismisses the notion, asserting that he could not have been a regular player. Hyuba questions whether Kuroko had ever played in any games. Once again defying expectations, surprising everyone with his response, Kuroko confidently affirms that he did play basketball at Taiko. Riko, taken aback by his admission, hastily instructs him to remove his shirt. The scene transitions, showing the coach on a bus ride home, her mind still preoccupied with thoughts of Kuroko. She reflects on the fact that despite his below-average physical attributes, Kuroko's body was already pushing its limits. Doubt resurfaces within her, questioning how he could have been a player on the renowned Taiko team. Meanwhile, after finishing practice, Tega Kagami finds himself alone on an empty streetball court, engrossed in solo training. Suddenly, he notices Tetsuya Kuroko standing near the hoop, catching Kagami off guard with his sudden presence. Distracted, he misses his shot and demands to know why Kuroko is there, using some choice words. To his surprise, Kuroko retorts with the same question. Kagami proceeds to explain his background, mentioning that he lived in America until his second year of middle school and expresses his disdain for Japan's low basketball standards. Kagami craves serious competition rather than mere recreational play. He asserts that in the realm of basketball, the weak and the strong should be clearly distinguishable. Yet Kuroko doesn't emanate any sense of strength. Challenging him to a one-on-one -on -one match, Kagami wants to gauge the true strength of the Generation of Miracles. Kuroko agrees, admitting that he was also looking forward to playing against him. Kagami's anticipation for an intense match quickly crumbles upon witnessing the glaring disparity in their skills. He berates Kuroko, stating that his basketball abilities are so lacking that they could lead to his demise. Frustrated, Kagami questions how Kuroko ever believed he stood a chance of winning. In response, the member of the Generation of Miracles reveals that he never harbored such delusions and merely wanted to witness his teammates' strength firsthand. Disheartened, Kagami abruptly ends the match, advising Kuroko to quit basketball due to his complete lack of talent. However, he firmly refuses, expressing his love for the sport and challenging the notion that talent is a prerequisite for success. Kuroko explains that they are two distinct types of players, referring to himself as a shadow. Before the scene concludes, their subsequent training session involves a mini-game between the first and second-year players. 
Some of the first years feel intimidated by the upperclassmen's impressive track record of reaching the finals in their first year. However, Tatsuya Kuroko remains mostly unfazed by their reputation. Teka Kagami believes that facing stronger opponents is always preferable to weaker ones, eagerly anticipating the challenge. True to his belief, he effortlessly establishes himself as the strongest among the first years, commencing the game with an uncontested dunk over Rinosuk Metobe. While Riko Eda remarks that Kagami's plays lack refinement and rely solely on intuition, she is nonetheless impressed by his raw talent, as are the other players. In contrast, Kuroko appears somewhat clueless on the court and frequently loses possession of the ball. The second-year players quickly redirect their focus towards shutting down Kagami after realizing that he mostly scores through individual efforts. This quickly demoralizes the other first-year players, who begin to doubt their chances of winning. One of them even declares his desire to quit. Hearing this, Kagami grabs him by the collar, demanding an explanation and expressing his frustration. Kuroko intervenes, hitting Kagami behind the knees and advising him to calm down. Kagami's frustration swiftly shifts towards Kuroko, who effortlessly evades his attacks. This sudden clash captures the attention of the players, with Shunizuki questioning if Kuroko had even been participating, and Riko Eda momentarily forgetting her role as the referee wondering about him too. After a short break, Kuroko surprises everyone by requesting a pass from a hesitant first-year player named Furihata. Although the player anticipates the ball being stolen, he reluctantly complies with Kuroko's plea. To everyone's astonishment, the Generation Oof Miracles member flawlessly executes a precise cross-court pass to Furihata, resulting in an easy basket. The bewildered first- and second-year players struggle to comprehend the origins of the pass and continue to be confounded by Kuroko's unpredictable plays. However, the first-year players manage to score consistently with his assistance. Riko Eina recognizes Kuroko's passes as the application of misdirection, a technique akin to the manipulation of sight used in slate of hand tricks. She realizes that Kuroko must be the rumored phantom, the sixth member of the Generation of Miracles. With his guidance, the first-year players gradually narrow the score gap, bringing it to 36 to 37. In a pivotal moment, the phantom intercepts the ball instead of passing it and attempts a layup, only to see it bounce off the rim. Seizing the opportunity, Kagami leaps from behind, snatching the missed shot and emphatically dunks it in. He berates Kuroko, calling him a dumbass for not making the shot, reiterating his disdain for weakness. Unfazed, Kuroko merely smiles to himself as scoring was never his intention to begin with. Later, Tega Kagami visits a food chain, Maji Burger, placing an unusually large order before settling down at what he assumes is an unoccupied table. To his surprise, Tetsuya Kuroko is already seated there, enjoying a vanilla shake. Kagami requests that Kuroko leave to avoid any misconceptions about their friendship, but he refuses. Resigning himself to the situation, Kagami sighs and offers one of his burgers to the Phantom, acknowledging that while he dislikes individuals who are inept at basketball, Kuroko has earned his respect. As they leave the restaurant, Kagami takes the opportunity to inquire about the true strength of the Generation of Miracles and how his current self would fare against them. Kuroko coldly responds that he would be swiftly defeated, much to Kagami's annoyance. The Generation of Miracles member elaborates, explaining that each of the five miracles has enrolled in different powerhouse schools contending for the pinnacle of basketball. Viewing this as a challenge, Kagami declares his determination to defeat all of them and become the best player in Japan. However, Kuroko dismisses his ambition, asserting that such a feat would be impossible to accomplish alone. He arrives at his own resolution, promising to become Kagami's shadow, guiding him towards greatness and transforming him into the best player in Japan alongside the rest of the Siren High basketball team. As time progresses, Kegami one day engages in a conversation with Junpei Hyuga, eagerly inquiring about when he can participate in the basketball games. To his disappointment, Kegami learns that he is currently only a trial member of the club and not eligible to play in official matches. Determined to change his status, Kegami hastily seeks out Riko Eda, requesting an official club membership form. Riko, slightly amused by his impatience, reveals that Kuroko had approached her earlier with the same request, wondering aloud about his eagerness before handing Kagami the form. However, before he can depart, the coach stops him, informing Kagami that she will only accept the completed applications on Monday at 8.40am on the rooftop. As he leaves, Kagami catches sight of an excerpt from Saren High's student newspaper pinned to a bulletin board in the hallway. The article discusses the basketball club's remarkable performance in the previous year's tournament, despite being composed solely of first-year students. Kuroko suddenly materializes next to him and astutely remarks about their impressive abilities, leaving Kagami startled enough to yell and seize him by the head. Internally, he ponders how Kuroko had ever earned the reputation of being the enigmatic sixth man of Teiko Junior High. Kagame also wonders why Kuroko chose Siren over prestigious schools like the other members of the Generation of Miracles. However, before he can voice his inquiries, Kuroko mysteriously vanishes. Shortly before Siren High's morning assembly on Monday, Riko Aida gathers Tega Kagami, Tatsuya Kuroko, Koichi Kawahara, Hiroshi Fukuda, and Koki Furihata on the rooftop for a discussion. 
The coach shares her commitment to leading the team towards the national championships and warns them to leave if they are not prepared to give their all. She adds an additional requirement for club acceptance. Each member must state their year, class, name, and announce their ambitions from the rooftop. Failure to achieve their goals will result in returning, stripping naked, and confessing their feelings to the girl they love. Although the group is initially shocked and disbelieving, Rico explains that the second-year students had undergone the same ritual the previous year. Kagami dismisses it as an insufficient test and boldly jumps onto the railing, introducing himself with a proclamation of defeating the generation of miracles and becoming the best player in Japan. Following Kagami, Kawahara begins to delve into a lengthy monologue about his life story, only to be interrupted by Riko. Fukube then reveals that he joined the club after being asked for assistance by an upperclassman, while Furihata shares that he aimed to become the best at basketball after a girl promised to go out with him if he achieved greatness at anything. Kuroko is the next to speak, asking for permission to use a megaphone to compensate for his lack of ability to speak loudly. However, their conversation is abruptly interrupted by the school principal, who scolds them for causing a disturbance. Later in the evening, Kagami pays another visit to Maji Burger, ordering a substantial amount of food. Unintentionally, he once again ends up at the same table as Kuroko. Curiosity peak, Kagami asks him why he didn't attend a prominent school like the other members of the Generation of Miracles, and what motivates him to play basketball. Kuroko explains that his former team at Teiko Junior High was overly fixated on winning, lacking an essential element that he felt was missing that is the teamwork. Kuroko is determined to try his best to defeat each member of the Generation of Miracles in his own unique way and help Siren become the best team in Japan. Kagami corrects him, expressing that they surely will. The following day, Siren High is abuzz with excitement and commotion as students gather around a large message etched on the ground that reads, We will be the best in Japan. A smile spreads across Kagami's face as he takes in the sight, and Riko comments that it just might be intriguing enough to succeed. Amidst the crowd, Kuroko remains unfazed by the spectacle, engrossed in a book at his desk. As the absent-mindedly reaches up to rub his nose, a faint trace of white chalk powder is seen on the sleeve of his uniform by Kagami, revealing that Kuroko was the one responsible for the message, fulfilling Riko's directive from their rooftop conversation. Later, in the basketball club's locker room, Shinji Kobane picks up an issue of Basketball Monthly magazine featuring interviews with the renowned Generation of Miracles. Flipping through the pages with Junpei Hyuga, they search for an article about Tetsuya Kuroko, only to find that every player from Taiko Junior High is featured except for him. Perplexed, they question Kuroko about his absence from the interviews. He calmly responds that they simply forgot about him, undisturbed by being overlooked. Kuroko explains that he is fundamentally different from the other five prodigies, suggesting that his approach to the game sets him apart. Soon after, Fukuda enters the locker room and announces Riko Eda's return from schedule in a practice game. While he is unaware of the opponent, Fukuda mentions that Riko was practically skipping with excitement. Hugo warns the team that the coach's skipping is indicative of a formidable opponent. During practice, Riko finally reveals that their upcoming rival is Keijo Hai, a team renowned at the national level and recently bolstered by the addition of Ryota Kais, one of the generation of miracles, and also a successful model. Meanwhile, Kais himself decides to pay a visit to Siren High before their game. As he navigates through the school premises, effortlessly drawing the attention of dozens of students, the model eventually makes his way to the basketball team. With ease, Kais discreetly observes a portion of their practice before the gymnasium becomes filled with female students eagerly seeking his autograph or simply longing to catch a glimpse of the popular figure. Expressing his apologies to the basketball team for unintentionally causing a stir, Kais humbly asks if they can spare five minutes of their time. After the swarm of students disperses, he takes the opportunity to introduce himself to the team, revealing that he is Kuroko's old friend from middle school. Curiosity peak, Koki Furihata seizes a moment to check Ovi Kaisa's interview in Basketball Monthly, discovering that his extraordinary physical abilities and astonishing growth rate propelled him to become a regular player despite starting basketball only in his second year of middle school. However, Kai swiftly attempts to downplay the article, dismissing it as an exaggeration. He claims to be the weakest among the five prodigies and alleges that the others bullied him because of it. Their conversation is abruptly interrupted when Kagami unexpectedly hurls a basketball at Kais, who instinctively reacts and manages to catch it before it can strike him. Kagami nonchalantly offers a sarcastic apology for the interruption and promptly challenges Kais to a one-on-one -on -one showdown. He takes a moment to contemplate the proposition before accepting the challenge. Commencing the match, Case replicates a move he had observed Kagami execute during practice, exerting such force that it causes Kagami to stumble and lose his footing. Observing from the sidelines, Kuroko remarks that he doesn't recognize this person and had underestimated how rapidly the generation of miracles has improved in the few months since their time at Taiko Junior High. Following his score, Case expresses disappointment with the match and proceeds to invite Kuroko to join him at Kaijo, declaring Saren to be a waste of his talents. 
However, Kuroko respectfully declines the offer explaining that his perspective has changed since middle school. He emphasizes his commitment to Kagami, having already promised to defeat the Generation of Miracles together. Kagami, undeterred by his defeat, grins with satisfaction, relishing the prospect of facing off against the remaining four members of the Generation of Miracles. Confidently echoing Kuroko's challenge, Kagami's unwavering resolve even manages to amuse Kai's. Siren High's basketball team arrives at Kaijo High, ready for their much-anticipated match. Kuroko mimuses Kagami's unusual anger and inquires about the reason behind it. Kagami reveals that he was so excited for today's match that he couldn't sleep the night before. Just then, Ryota Kais rushes over to the Siren High team, eager to guide them to the gym for the practice match as the school's building is vast. Ignoring greetings from both Riko Aida and Tega Kagami, Kais focuses his attention on Tetsuya Kuroko, expressing disappointment at his rejection of the previous offer to join Kaijo. Only after Kuroko instructs him to stop being sarcastic, does Kais turn his attention to Kagami, curious about the person who inspired such remarks. The Generation of Miracles member asserts that while he may not care much about the Generation of Miracles label, he cannot ignore a blatant challenge like Kagami's and vows to crush him with all his might. Siren is then led to the gym only to discover that it has been divided in half, with one side reserved for the player's practice game, while the other side is utilized by Keijo's regular team. Genta Takeuchi, the coach, explains that they have made this arrangement as the players sitting out wouldn't benefit much from watching the game. However, Takeuchi assures them that they will still be competing against Keijo's regular players. Kais attempts to join the game but is promptly told by the coach to sit out, as he believes it wouldn't even be a fair match if Generation of Miracles member played. Undeterred, Kais turns to the Siren team and proposes that if they can give the other team a sound beating, the coach will be forced to include him in the game. He cautions Kagami, stating that if the latter can't even defeat him, he shouldn't go around boasting about defeating the Generation of Miracles. Both teams line up on the court and the referee, unaware of Kuroko's presence, calls for Saren to have all five players. Kuroko introduces him, which catches Kaiju's regulars and the players practicing on the other side of the gym by surprise. The coach dismisses it as ridiculous, expecting Saren to have only average players after their boastful claims. Kais intervenes, correcting the coach's perception by asserting that Saren is not just decent. As the game commences, Rico keenly observes Keiju's players and notes that their numbers are significantly higher than average. She wonders how far Kagami and Kuroko's abilities will be able to carry the team, considering the gap in numbers. The game begins with Keijo winning the tip-off. Kasumatsu from Keijo tries to organize their offense, but Kuroko steals the ball and swiftly goes on a fast break before they can react. Although the Kaijo player easily catches up to him due to his slow speed, Kuroko quickly passes the ball to Kagami, who slams it with such force that he shatters the hoop, tearing off the wooden backboard. The game comes to a halt, and to take Uchi's annoyance, they are forced to continue the game on the full court as requested humbly by Kuroko. Finally, Kais is allowed to enter the court, much to the delight of his fangirls in the audience. He takes a moment to wave to them, but is promptly scolded and kicked by Kasumatsu. He then asks Kais about Siren's number 10 and the latter simply replies with Kagami's name before excitedly discussing Kuroko's talents instead. Kasumatsu, not amused by Kaisa's exuberance, playfully retaliates by delivering another gentle hit, stating that it would be impolite not to return the favor of breaking the hoop. Following suit, Kai seizes the opportunity to demonstrate his prowess by executing a thunderous dunk with significantly more force than Kagami's earlier slam. Although his attempt doesn't result in shattering the hoop, Haze receives another playful kick from Kasumatsu for not being able to break the hoop and just boasting. Undeterred, the game presses on with a relentless pace. Kuroko continues to display his uncanny ability to pass and steal the ball, leaving Kasumatsu perplexed about his true identity and skills. Kagami, determined to outshine his opponent, attempts a fadeaway shot, only to be met with a decisive block from Kais. Without missing a beat, Kai swiftly turns around and successfully executes the very same move to score. The intensity of the game surprises Shinji Kogane and the other players on the bench, as they find themselves caught up in a fast-paced battle within the first three minutes of play. Sensing the toll it's taking on his body, Kuroko confides in Junpei Hyuga, requesting a timeout to recover while also allowing Kagami to regain his composure. Riko Ada, already recognizing the strain, calls a timeout of her own. Currently, the score stands at 22-25 in favor of Kaijo. During the timeout, Takeuchi reproaches his team harshly for allowing Saren to score so many points. Keisumatsu seizes the opportunity to inquire about Kuroko, prompting Kais to assure him that he won't pose a problem for much longer as his ability lasts for 40 minutes. Kais reveals that the other team has a weakness. Simultaneously, Kuroko is acknowledging that the unexpectedly high intensity of the match has rapidly diminished his effectiveness, leading him to explain his unique playing style and his weakness. Meanwhile, Kais, already aware of Kuroko's abilities, enlightens his teammates about his lack of presence on the court, achieved through his skillful manipulation of others' lines of sight using misdirection. He emphasizes that the more Kuroko employs this technique, the easier it becomes for opponents to adapt, 
While on the other hand, Rico scolds Kuroko for not disclosing this weakness earlier. The game resumes with Saren transitioning from a man-to-man -man defense to a box in one's own defense, specifically targeting Kais as advised by Rico. However, Kasamatsu widens the score gap to 22-28 with his skillful three-pointer. Kagami attempting to pass to Kuroko finds his pass intercepted by Yoshitaka Moriyama as Kaiju's team grows more accustomed to Kuroko's presence. The score gap continues to widen reaching 25-33. to During an out-of-bounds call, Keiz acknowledges Kagami's potential but dismisses his chances of victory against the formidable generation of miracles. Kais asserts that the difference in strength between their teams is too vast. He reminds Kagami of his own ability to copy and improve upon anything Kais observes, boasting that he only needs a single look to replicate their techniques. Kagami, undeterred, responds with laughter, relishing the challenge before him. He reflects on how it has been a long time since someone has truly tested him, highlighting his recent arrival from America. Kagami declares that it is too early to determine the outcome of the match, asserting that Kuroko, with his ability to disappear on the court, is Kais's weakness. After all, he cannot copy what cannot be seen. The first quarter concludes with Keijo High leading Siren High with a score of 35 to 27. Tega Kagami, brimming with confidence, believes he has identified Ryota Kaiza's weakness, Tetsuya Kuroko. He boldly asserts that Siren High will bring Kaiju High to tears in the second quarter. As the team gathers on the bench, Riko Aida emphasizes the importance of teamwork, asking Kuroko and Kagami if they are up to the task. Although Kagami harbors some doubt, Kuroko playfully jabs him in the side, reminding him to stay focused on defeating Kais. The second quarter commences and both teams exchange points steadily, quickly reaching a score of 39-29 within the opening minute. Keijo persists with their man-to-man -man defense, with Kais assigned to guard Kagami. He anticipates Kagami's next move, whether a drive or a fadeaway shot. But to his surprise, he passes the ball to Kuroko, who swiftly returns it, resulting in a successful score. Kais realizes the coordination between Kagami and Kuroko. As he guesses for their next play, Kais is caught off guard once again when the ball is passed to Junpei Hyuga instead. The score narrows to 39-34. to Keijo becomes increasingly wary of Hyuga's three-pointers and the budding teamwork between Kuroko and Kagami, even though their coordination is not yet fully honed. Kuroko informs Kais that individually, he is powerless and Kagami stands little chance on his own, but together, they possess enough strength to pose a formidable challenge. However, Kais remains resolute in his belief that he will emerge as the victor. Kais then attempts a three-pointer, but is blocked by Kagami. Siren initiates a fast break, but Kais accidentally collides with Kuroko, while turning around, forcing him out of the game because of head injury. Shinji Kogane replaces Kuroko on the court. Riko advises Kagami to focus on defense in Kuroko's absence since Kais will only copy his moves if he is on the offense. Hyuga also encourages Kagami to have faith in his senior's ability to score. Meanwhile, two members of the Generation of Miracles are en route to watch their former teammates play, playfully referring to one as a copycat and the other as the invisible guy. During Kuroko's rest on the bench at Keijo High, the score stands at 74-68 in favor of Kaijo. Riko observes that the team is lacking energy after the intense pace in the first half. She expresses a wish for Kuroko's presence, and surprisingly, he responds with a groggy, good morning, and sits up despite his injury. Kuroko stumbles towards the court, determined to make a difference, even if it is a small one. Riko stops him, but he implores her to let him play, reminding the coach of his promise to be Kagami's shadow. Reluctantly, Riko agrees with the condition that Kuroko will be substituted immediately if any trouble arises. He re-enters the game, utilizing his misdirection to pass the ball effectively. The unintended break from the game disrupts Keijo's familiarity with Kuroko's style. As the game progresses, Hyuga manages to score a shot that ties the score at 82. Kai is momentarily stunned by the score, laughs to himself and accelerates his pace, surpassing Kuroko's attempts to steal the ball and breaking the tie with a resounding dunk. He exhibits a more serious demeanor, adamant on winning. As the clock ticks down to the final moments of the game, both teams engage in a frenetic exchange of points. The tension hangs heavy in the air as the score remains neck and neck, with less than 10 seconds remaining. In this critical juncture, Kuroko calmly shares a revelation with Kagami. He informs his teammate that they possess one final move, a trump card that Kais cannot replicate, though it can only be executed once. With the crowd on the edge of their seats, the game hangs in the balance. Yukio Kasamatsu of Keijo High makes a desperate attempt to score, but Junpei Hyuga, driven by sheer determination, lunges forward to block the shot. However, his fatigue legs fail him and he is unable to respond in time due to the strain. It is at this pivotal moment that Kagami springs into action. With light and quick reflexes, he swats the ball away, preventing Kasamatsu's shot from finding its mark. Hyuga seizes the opportunity, catching the ball and swiftly propelling it across the court. As if guided by a shared understanding, Kagami and Kuroko sprint towards the opposing basket, their eyes locked on victory. With only two seconds left on the clock, Kuroko releases a pinpoint pass. Rising with all his might, Kagami elevates towards the hoop, ready to complete an awe-inspiring alley-oop. 
In a stunning display of athleticism, Kaiser launches himself into the air, attempting to block the shot and maintain Kunijiro's chances of victory. However, fate seems to favor Siren High on this occasion. Although Kai's jumps at the same moment as Kagami, an inexplicable twist of events occurs. Kai's ascent falters and he begins to descend while Kagami continues his upward trajectory. The crowd gasps in disbelief as Kagami's dunk sails through the hoop uncontested. The final buzzer sounds and the scoreboard confirms Siren High's triumph with a score of 100 to 98. The spectators are left dumbfounded by the breathtaking conclusion of the game. The resounding victory of Siren High over Kaijo High, fueled by Kagami and Kuroko's indomitable spirit, leaves an irrepressible impression. The spectacle they have witnessed reaffirms the power of teamwork, resilience, and the unyielding pursuit of victory in the world of basketball. Kais, overcome by the shock and experiencing his first ever loss, finds himself in tears. Kasamatsu, seizing the moment, hits him for crying and taunts Kais about his previous claims of never losing. The teams exchange farewells as the referee officially declares Siren High as the victors. Feeling dejected, Kais flees the scene, seeking solace in his grief. It is in this state of despair that he encounters Maitarima, the renowned shooter and the member of the Generation of Miracles. Midorima, known for his peculiarity and unwavering belief in horoscopes, scolds Kais for his defeat. He mocks Kais's ability to execute dunks, comparing them to a task any monkey could accomplish. Minorima suggests that Kais's misfortune may be due to fate not favoring him, emphasizing the value of achieving success from a distance rather than relying on close-range shots. Sarcastically, he questions whether Kais was never taught to pursue the most probable outcome while leaving the best to fate. Minorima reveals his eccentric belief in lucky items based on horoscopes and presents a green toy frog as his current fortunate charm. Kais, perplexed by Midorima's peculiar behavior as always, suggests that he should instead talk to Kuroko. However, Minorima dismisses the idea, citing the incompatible nature of their blood types. A and B, nevertheless, he acknowledges and respects Kuroko's unique playing style. Maitorema finds it difficult to accept Kuroko's decision to attend a relatively unknown school like Siren, suggesting that his presence is solely due to the upcoming division preliminaries with Siren High. Maitorema also expresses doubt in Siren's capabilities, further reinforcing his skepticism. Meanwhile, as Siren's basketball team departs from Kaijo's premises, Riko takes the Phantom of the Generation of Miracles, Kuroko, to Sasaki General Hospital for a checkup. Happily, she announces that everything is fine, delivering a sigh of relief to the Siren team. Overjoyed by their victory, they decide to grab a meal on their way home. However, they find themselves without sufficient funds. Rico leads them to a steakhouse, where she challenges them to consume enormous steaks within 30 minutes to eat for free as announced by the restaurant. Failure to do so would result in a hefty payment of 10,000 yen. As the team struggles to complete the challenge, Kagami emerges as the sole victor, consuming his entire steak along with all the others. The team expresses gratitude for his feet, thankful that they don't have to pay. Meanwhile, Kuroko, the first to leave the restaurant unexpectedly encounters Kai's outside who wishes to talk to him. As the rest of the team comes outside, they search for Kuroko, unable to locate him anywhere. Simultaneously, the members of the Generation of Miracles stroll through a nearby playground, where Kai's reflects on how they haven't conversed like this in a long time. He recounts his encounter with Midorima, sharing his frustrations and how everything seems to be going wrong for him. Curious, Kai's questions Kuroko about his sudden disappearance after their middle school basketball championship game. Meanwhile, Siren basketball team is searching for him everywhere and are wondering how they did not notice Kuroko leaving. Back at the playground, Kiyami spots him engaged in conversation with Kai's. Kuroko reveals that he grew disillusioned with Teiko's policies, feeling that something crucial was missing from their approach. Kai's is astounded, questioning what could be more important than winning. Kuroko counters, explaining that he despised basketball during that time, detesting the feel of the ball, the sound of basketball shoes, and even the swish of the net. Initially, Kuroko's passion for basketball drove him to pick up the sport. After joining Saren High, he found himself deeply impressed by Kagami after their initial encounter, as his love for the game emanated from the depths of his heart. Despite enduring his fair share of hardships, Kagami's dedication to basketball surpassed that of anyone else. On the other hand, Kais believes that although Kuroko's fondness for Kagami stemmed from their shared love for basketball, the two would inevitably drift apart. Kais elucidates that the disparity between himself and the other four members of the Generation of Miracles lies not in their physical prowess, but they all possess unique abilities that even Kais cannot imitate. During the game, Kais astutely observed that Kagami, much like the Generation of Miracles, possessed a distinctive ability and was still in the process of learning. He asserts that although Kagami currently thrives on the thrill of recklessly challenging formidable opponents, he would eventually develop into a formidable force on par with the Generation of Miracles. Kais predicts that Kagami's growing strength would lead him to part ways with his current team. He poses a question to Kuroko, pondering whether he believes his partner would remain unchanged after attaining such elevated levels of power. Caught in the midst of their conversation, Kagami interjects by striking Kuroko, 
and demanding an explanation for his departure. He also reprimands Kais for kidnapping his teammate, an act that prevented them from returning home and resulted in a stern lecture from their coach regarding responsibility. Suddenly, a group of hooligans begins to taunt the boys playing basketball in the court. These five thugs audaciously challenge the three street basketballers to a game, but quickly devolve into harassing and physically assaulting the younger kids. Unable to bear witness to such injustice, Kuroko steps forward, with Kagami and Kais joining him in defense. The trio unites their skills to overcome the bullies in a basketball showdown, leaving the kids awestruck by their prowess. However, later, Kagami scolds Kuroko for recklessly involving himself with the thugs without considering the potential consequences. Despite Kuroko's unwavering conviction that he could not tolerate unfairness, even if it meant enduring a beating, Kagami admonishes him for his lack of foresight. As he chastises Kuroko, Kais bids them farewell, satisfied with the opportunity to have played alongside his former teammate. He playfully reminds Kagami of his impending revenge, adding key to his name. Kuroko informs him that Kais only adds such a suffix to someone's name if he acknowledges their abilities, implying that Kagami should take it as a compliment. However, this remark only serves to frustrate him further. With Kais's departure, he imparts a warning to Kagami and Kuroko, urging them not to falter in the upcoming preliminaries. Curious about their conversation, Kuroko inquires whether Kagami listened to what Kais had to say. Kagami confirms that he overheard the discussion about the possibility of their partnership disbanding. Sensing the tension, Kagami reminds Kuroko of the importance of following the light relating it to his approach to basketball. At that moment, the rest of the team locates them and their coach, Riko, hurls Kuroko to the ground in frustration while the other players disperse. After the intense match against Kaijo High, the Siren High basketball players find themselves utterly exhausted. Roki, while sitting in a class with Hyuga, recognizes the challenging nature of competing against the generation of miracles. She suddenly remembers something and later gathers the basketball players. The second year members assign a special task to the first years. Their mission is to acquire the highly sought after special bread from the school cafeteria. The cafeteria exclusively prepares this bread on the 27th of every month in limited quantities, and it is rumored to bring good luck and immense success in all endeavors. The triple delicacy Iberian pork cutlet sandwich, adorned with caviar, foie gras, and truffles, carries a staggering price tag of 2,800 yen. The first years are taken aback by its exorbitant cost and wonder if such a luxurious combination of ingredients is worth it. However, Hugo assures them that obtaining the bread is crucial to capitalize on their recent victory against Kaijo and maintain their momentum. Roki warns the first years that the cafeteria will be unusually crowded since they aren't the only ones vying for the special bread. To ensure their success, Hugo hands them an envelope containing the required amount of money, which the second years have collected as a customary ritual. He instructs them to purchase lunch for everyone on the team as well. Huba also emphasizes the consequences of failure, stating that the team will have to endure triple the amount of footwork and strength training as punishment. Eager to fulfill their task, the first years hurry off to the cafeteria. However, upon their arrival, they are taken aback by the chaotic scene unfolding before them. They quickly realize that their own strength might not be sufficient, as the crowd consists of robust individuals, including rugby team players, sumo wrestlers, and weightlifters. Despite the daunting challenge, Kagami's enthusiasm remains undeterred and he fervently attempts to navigate through the crowd. Alas, Kagami soon discovers the overwhelming reality of the Japanese lunchtime rush. Determined to succeed, the first years persist in their efforts to secure the coveted bread. However, they are repeatedly thwarted and even subjected to physical altercations by others. Kagami even resorts to crowd surfing but fails in his endeavors. Suddenly, Kuroko appears, holding the bread in his hands. He calmly explains that the crowd inadvertently propelled him forward, allowing Kuroko to obtain the bread while leaving the money at the counter. The astonished first years acknowledge Kuroko's unique abilities, recognizing the Phantom Sixth as a league of his own. The first years triumphantly return to the second years, who instruct them to savor the bread and enjoy it. To everyone's surprise, even Kuroko finds the bread incredibly delicious, sparking joy among the team. With the preliminaries quickly approaching in the form of a tournament, Haga addresses the basketball team, emphasizing the importance of remaining vigilant in every single match to avoid elimination. He explains that Tokyo is divided into blocks A to D, and the winners from each block will proceed to the championship league. From there, only the top three teams will qualify for the inter-high competition, meaning that a mere chosen 1% of the participating schools will stand on the court of their dreams. Confidently, Kagemi asserts that teams aren't chosen but rather earn their position through victory, boosting team morale. Hyuga further elaborates that they fell just one step short the previous year, and this year they face even stronger opponents. He singles out Shotoku High as the most formidable adversary, noting that they reached the top eight last year and have now recruited a member of the Generation of Miracles. Hyuga warns the team that they can't progress to the Nationals if they fail to defeat them. However, their encounter with Shotoku High awaits them in the Championship League. Curious about the Generation of Miracles member in Shotoku, Kagami turns to Kuroko for information. The latter explains that Kai's was right about the other four members being significantly stronger than them. 
Now, with the generation of miracles having grown even more powerful, Kuroko can't fathom the extent of their abilities. However, their first match isn't against Shotoku High, but rather Shinkyo Academy, a team that has recently added a foreign player named Papambe Siki, who towers over even Kagami in height. Riko shocks her teammates by showing him a picture of the foreign player and revealing that he stands at a towering 2 meters and hails from Senegal. She explains that Shinkyo was a mid-tier team last year, but has now joined the trend of recruiting exchange students to bolster their strength, and Embe Siki is one such addition. Initially, Kagami dismisses Embe as merely tall, but Riko clarifies that his long legs and arms contribute to his imposing presence. Undeterred, the coach asserts her determination and informs Kagami and Kuroko that she has devised a special training regimen for them. With the battle ahead, the players embark on rigorous preparations, dedicating themselves to intense training for several days. Finally, the day of the match arrives and the atmosphere is charged with anticipation. Mbe Siki's provocation towards Kuroko, labeling him as just a kid, only fuels the determination of Siren High to emerge victorious against Shinkyo. Initially, Mbe proves to be a formidable opponent due to his extraordinary height, presenting a challenge for the Siren High team. However, Kagami quickly switches to defensive mode, which causes Mbe to struggle and miss his shots. Riko reveals that she had prepared the team for this very situation. Kagami had undergone intensive man-to-man -man defensive training with Mito, a seasoned veteran in defense. Through this training, Kagami learned that defending isn't solely about blocking shots, but also about disrupting the opponent's rhythm and forcing them to miss their target. Frustrated by the unconventional defensive tactics employed by Siren High, Bay remains determined not to lose to a group of young players. However, in a display of perfect coordination, Kagami and Kuroko seamlessly work together on the court. Before Bebe knows it, the duo has maneuvered the ball past him and Kagami successfully scores a goal. Kagami and Kuroko demonstrate remarkable coordination, leaving Bebe astounded. He can't fathom how these kids are effortlessly overpowering him. Kagami's consecutive dunks in the first round of preliminaries shock not only the spectators but also the opponents. Kuroko also showcases an entirely different level of performance, surprising even his own teammates. His disappointment at Membe underestimating them fuels Kuroko's determination to defeat him. The first quarter ends with Saren in the lead, astonishingly ahead by 8 to 23. Riko replaces Kuroko to conserve his energy, knowing that his abilities have a time limit. This decision places the burden solely on Kagami's shoulders as he faces Mbei alone. Riko instructs the team to prevent the gap from closing between them and emphasizes that everything now relies on Kagami stopping Mbei as there is no other player on the opponent's team who possesses such strength. Initially, he struggles to defend against Mbei without Kuroko's assistance. The score reaches 12 to 24, still favoring Siren, but the gap begins to narrow. However, Kagami regains his composure and scores a rebound, revitalizing his team's lead. Meanwhile, the Shinkyo team members attempt to coordinate with Mei, encouraging him while passing the ball to their foreign player. However, Mebe becomes increasingly intimidated by Kagami, questioning how he continues to elevate himself higher and higher. From the bench, Satoshi Tsuchida discusses with Riko how Kagami's dedication and practice have paid off, resulting in his significant improvement. However, the coach ponders whether he is pushing himself too hard. Simultaneously, Kuroko recalls Kaiza's words, foreseeing Kagami's eventual ascension to the level of the Generation of Miracles and his subsequent separation from the team. With five minutes remaining in the final quarter, Siri maintains a narrow lead of 51 to 60. Riko inquires if Kuroko is ready to return to the game, to which Kuroko confidently responds that he has been prepared for a while now. Consequently, the coach subs Kuroko back in. He injects renewed energy into the game and Siren High continues to score. Mbe, determined not to be defeated, attempts to shoot, but Kagami successfully blocks his shot, leading his team to victory with a final score of 67 to 79. Siren then goes on to effortlessly triumph over their subsequent opponents. In their second game, they confront Jitsuzen and secure a resounding victory, with a massive margin of 118 to 51, even with Kuroko remaining on the bench throughout the match. Their third game pits them against Kinga High, a team that made it to the top 16 in the previous year's tournament. Despite Kinga High's strong balance between offense and defense, Siren High manages to defeat them convincingly with a score of 71 to 92 while strategically preserving Kuroko's energy. The fourth game brings them face to face with Meijo High, a team brimming with overconfidence before the game. The players of Meijo High belittle Siren, claiming their success thus far has been purely luck based. However, this team comprises the same thugs who were defeated by Kuroko, Kagami, and Kais previously. The mere presence of the duo terrifies the Meijo High players to the point where they can't even perform. The match turns into a one-sided affair, ending with a score of 108-41 in Siren's favor. The seniors realize that excessive confidence has taken hold of the team, prompting their coach to take them to watch a match featuring Shotoku High. This team is the King of East and is known for having one of the Generation of Miracles members, Matarima Shintaro. 
The junior members of the Siren High team are still filled with confidence as everything has been going smoothly for them. However, their bubble is burst by Hyuga, who enlightens them about the consistent domination of three teams from Tokyo in the top three positions for the past ten years. These teams are Shotoku High called the King of East, Senshinkan High the King of West, and Seiho High the King of North. These three teams are evenly matched, resulting in a constant rotation of the top spot. However, they never allow any other teams to break into the top three. The juniors, still brimming with confidence, mention that even their seniors reached the championship lead the previous year. Hyuga, however, reveals that they never stood a chance against the powerhouse teams. Just then, the Shotoku High team arrives, embraced by the loud cheers of the spectators. Their motto is tenacity and persistence. Kagami confidently approaches Midorima to greet him, but the latter refuses to acknowledge the former. Seizing an opportunity, Kagami pretends to shake Midorima's hand, but instead writes his introduction on the member of Generation of Miracles' hand, challenging him to a match and vowing revenge on behalf of his seniors. However, a black-haired player from Shutoku steps forward, sarcastically questioning Kagami at his seniors failed to inform him about what happened to them the previous year. He informs Kagami that their team was defeated by each of the top three teams by triple the score. Midorima takes the challenge further, asserting that even if they were to face Siren again, history would repeat itself, with Shutoku emerging victorious. At this point, Kuroko steps forward and asks Midorima not to jump to conclusions before the game. However, the Shutoku member, belonging to the Generation of Miracles, expresses his dislike for Kuroko and mentions that he has much to say to him. But it will all be meaningless and Midorima will wait until the finals. The black-haired player, identified as Takao, pulls Kuroko aside and informs him that Midorima has taken an interest in him, even going to see his first preliminary match. Minorima scolds Takao, dismissing his claims as fabrications and issues a veiled threat to Kuroko, suggesting that he will soon prove the navy of his thinking. The match between Shotoku and Kinka begins, and in the second quarter, the former takes a commanding lead of 30 points. The junior members of Siren High marvel at how effortlessly Shotoku seems to dominate the game. Kuga explains that strong teams make it appear easy due to their exceptional fundamentals in areas such as passing, handling, and running. However, there is another crucial factor, having a true scorer. Kagami points out Midorima's remarkable performance, scoring 5 out of 5 shots. Kuroko adds that he has never witnessed him miss a single shot. Just then, Midorima attempts an incredibly high-arching shot, confidently turning away without even looking at the basket. Despite his nonchalant attitude, the ball effortlessly sails through the hoop, solidifying Shutoku's victory with a score of 153-21. As the Siren High team prepares to leave, Riko reminds them that they have another game to play. Everyone else recalls this fact, having carefully reviewed the tournament bracket, except for Kagami, Riko, filled with sternness, proceeds to scold him, emphasizing the demanding nature of Saren's schedule for the upcoming fourth game and also of the last day. With a touch of astonishment, Kagami carefully examines the schedule and comes to a sudden realization. Saren is tasked with not just one, but two games on the same day, specifically the semifinals and the grand final. This means that before facing Shutoku, they will have to confront another formidable team prior to that, namely Siho. It dawns upon them that Siren, a single day, will be pitted against two of the revered three emperor teams. The gravity of the situation is evident to everyone, who find themselves veering towards feelings of impossibility and worry. However, Higami and Kuroko, in contrast, find themselves ignited with excitement at the prospect of going up against two formidable opponents within the span of a single day. Kuroko, with a touch of pride, boosts their team's morale by declaring that challenging circumstances have the power to kindle a fervent fire within him. Undeterred, Kagami boldly proclaims his intention to proceed with practice, leading Riko to label him a basketball idiot, while simultaneously urging him to rest. 